left that upper room and they went out to towns and cities and villages to bring Jesus and his message to others. We call that great event Pentecost. Pentecost, which we will celebrate in several weeks. And we look at that event as we imagine ourselves in the upper room and we might say to God, well, God, you know, that was great for the apostles. That was 2,000 years ago. That's fine. Well, could there be another Pentecost? And God says, yes, there have been many, many Pentecosts over the last 2,000 years. And this evening, in Blessed Francis Xavier Silos Church, for six of you, my sisters and brothers, today is your Pentecost. Because it is the same Holy Spirit that comes to you, that came to the Apostles. And that same Holy Spirit gives you exactly the same gifts that were given to the Apostles, and He speaks exactly the same message to you. Today is your Pentecost. And as the Spirit of God comes to you, your life is changed. You may not feel differently, but you're drawn more closely to the heart of Christ and filled with the Spirit, you are sent to live your faith and to be a witness of Christ in a new way, in a more courageous way. And this Pentecost moment of your confirmation is so important that you actually change your name today. You add to your already existing baptismal name another name, what we call the confirmation name, the name of a saint whom you have come to know something about. And you believe that this saint's example in their prayers will help you to live your life as a disciple and to be a witness of faith. We thank you for saying yes. In just a few moments, I will have the privilege to pray over you and to call down the gift of the Spirit. And then you will come forth to be anointed in the presence of family and friends and parishioners. It is a powerful and sacred moment between you and God and you and the church as the Spirit of God, as God breathes his life and spirit into you in a new way. And if it's such an intimate moment, you may ask, well, what will God be saying to me? You will not be able to hear him with your ears, but he will be speaking directly to your heart as he breathes the gift of his life and spirit into you in a new way. And what will he say? With great love and tenderness, he will call you by name. And then he will say, I formed you in the womb. You are my beloved son. You are my beloved daughter. And you will always be my beloved. You will always be important to me. And I will always be with you on the best of days and the worst, the darkest day of your life. You will not be alone, I promise. And there's nothing that you can ever say and nothing that you can ever do that will ever change my love for you. Well, sometimes when we hear those words from our God, we say, wait a minute, God, are you sure you know what you're talking about? Do you know some of the things I've done? Do you know some of the things I've thought about doing or I've wanted to do? Do you know that? And God says, yes, I know. And I have forgiven you. And you are my beloved son and my beloved daughter. And you always will be. As the Spirit of God comes to you and as that Spirit is breathed into you this afternoon, for a second time with great love and tenderness, God will speak your name. And then he will say to you, filled with my Spirit, now you must go forth and be a witness of faith. You must bring Jesus and his message to others. And how will you do that? First of all, when we hear that from God, we say, I can't do that. And God says, you know what? You're right. You can. However, with the gift of the Spirit, the Spirit gives you courage and wisdom. And so with the gift of the Spirit, you can go forth. And most often, my sisters and brothers, to be confirmed, you will be a witness of faith. You will bring Jesus and his message to others, most often by the way that you live, by your attitude by the way that you respect and care for others. And sometimes you will do that with words. And that's what it means to be a witness of faith. None of us do that perfectly. I'm a sinner. I assume all of us here are weak at times and we sin. And on those days when we really mess it up, we wake up the next morning and we admit to God, I messed it up yesterday. Now today, Give me an openness to your spirit. Let me be led by that spirit and moved by that spirit.